cabinet uh, uh, heaters on the cruise stage uh, have been turned off uh, and power subsystem is nominal otherwise. Got the thermal. Flight this is thermal. Uh, the Marty heater has been turned off as expected for EDL main. Uh, the only other state change for thermal is that uh, soak back from the DRCS cat vent into the valves continues. The temperature on the warmest DRCS valve is about 34C, which is just a couple degrees above the max set point. Okay, got the prop. Flight of this prop, we are nominal. We sent stage and cruise stage for most systems. The only change across the EDL start anchor is the turn off of these side cat vent heaters as expected. Roger, avionics. Uh, flight avionics, there's no change in the avionics state, and we're still green across the board. Second chance contingency software is now armed and ready to take over in the bed of a uh, prime computer reset. Roger, flight software. Flight, flight software is nominal. There is no change in uh, flight software execution state across the EDL start anchor, and all flight software metrics are still appropriate. Got default. Our only change is that all our system fault protection responses are now disabled. Roger, data management. Thank you, Max. The novel, the only change is we are now receiving only real time data products. Copy that. Telecom. Telecom is a nominal. The only change is the uplink transmitter has been turned off, therefore, the uplink carrier lock is unlocked. We are in one way non coherent, and the coherency is disabled, and also the ranging is disabled on the SDS team. Roger, ACS. ACS remains unchanged over the last anchor, and currently Mars is 38 degrees in field of view. Getting very big in the window. EDL activity lead, anything else uh, to add? Nothing else to add, like copy, mission? Nothing else. Okay, That's copy, that completes our post anchor following our mission. Post transition, Everything looks great. Thank you, Flight. You're not fooling me, guys. You're nervous. You're nervous. Thank you, Flight. Um, i just like to thank the cruise team yeah. for bringing us over 350 million miles uh, two unplanned NAF filter parameter changes and one heck of a lot of professionalism and uh, and dotting of the I's and crossing of the T's. Uh, Curiosity is in fantastic shape to perform entry, descent, landing and she's there because you guys got her here. So thank you very much. And good luck. See you on the other side on Mars. Roger. Thank you, EDL on phase lead and uh, mission. Um, uh, you know, this is mission uh, um, on behalf of. And joining us now is John Grunsfeld. Dr. Grunsfeld is a physicist in charge of all of science projects at NASA. He's also a former astronaut who flew on five shuttle missions and made especially out of spacewalks to refurbish the Hubble uh, on three of those. And Dr. Grunsfeld is here with us now. And here's your honorary uh, bottle of peanuts. Good luck, peanuts, for today's much. mission. Yep, we're, we're going to need these. <laughs> yes, we will. So let's talk a little bit about this mission and how does going to Mars again, why is that so important to, Mars, to, to NASA and why do we need to go back to Mars? Well, Mars has a very special place in our solar system as the closest analog to Earth. And so there's a couple of different ways. One is the science answer, which is because it's close analog, especially going to Gale Crater, we can understand the history of Mars, and I'm sure John Grotzinger has told us all about this, as if we were going down into the Grand Canyon and measuring you know, the geologic history. So we can compare the Earth to Mars at the same time as the solar system formed as these planets formed. And of course, to answer the really important question, which is a human question, are we alone in the universe? And so, although the Curiosity rover isn't designed to look for life, it's looked for signs of past habitability, and this will give us that answer. But it's one other thing is, 
we live in a solar system of riches. Uh, Jupiter, Saturn, the moons, the Earth, of course. Mars is the only place where someday you know, humans could live on a planet kind of like Earth. And so it gives us the vision of what might be the future. So it's putting all the pieces together. And this is one of those pieces to build ourselves up to the next one, the bigger one. That's right, one. the bigger one. Uh, so we're going to take a break and tell us, tell you a little bit about the penis. And uh, I don't know if you've seen what's going on in our control room here, as well as in the MSA. Oh, but I hear lots of munching. There's a lot of munching, and we're going to let you partake here. Thank you. This is a tradition here at JPL. It goes way back to the Ranger days. And what had happened was we had six missions. They all failed, but we kept on trying and kept on trying. And then Ranger 7 did it. It was able to achieve what it was meant to do at the moon. And somebody was eating peanuts at that time. And somebody figured those must be good luck. So since yep. then, on every mission, Dare mighty things by munching peanuts. Yep. And so, of course, Ranger 7 set us up for Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. That's right. To land on the moon. That's right. And the same way I think Curiosity is going to set us up for a time where women and men uh, in the not too distant future will land on the surface of Mars and they'll be astrobiologists and geologists and they'll be able to build on Curiosity's mission. And you are a physicist, so what are you most looking forward to that Curiosity will, will discover? The lessons from Hubble are that when Curiosity is roving and sending the data back to scientists on Earth, the biggest discovery is probably not going to be uh, the one that is, you know, some particular molecule that we're looking for in the rocks or a particular mineral. It's going to be something that nobody's ever thought of. It's going to be the real discovery space. And that's what I think uh, Curiosity will give us. So you don't even know what it might be. Nobody knows what it'll be. And Mars has a history of surprising us that way. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank I'll you. I'll let you go back in the control room. Okay. This go Curiosity. Go Curiosity. <laughs> thank you. And if you just joined us late, you're watching live coverage of the landing of the Curiosity rover on Mars from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. JPL is managed by the California Institute of Technology on behalf of NASA, and we will be back in a moment with Rob Manning, but we'll take a break first. <coughs> Dang, nab it. Okay, we're only 22 minutes to entry. Uh, ah! Things are continuing to go well. Ah! Uh, you might have seen here that uh, we passed out the traditional peanuts. Uh, we need all the good luck we can get here. Uh, but things are continuing to look very good. Uh, we're right where we expect to be. And uh, everything is going fine on the spacecraft. Curiosity is reporting things are going fine. Uh, right now, we're standing by for Curiosity, to, to, excuse me, for Odyssey to tell us that uh, they'll be around to uh, broadcast what's going on for us during EDL to relay the telemetry we get from, from Curiosity. Look at that here. Um, so uh, we're waiting for them to come back to Earth, to talking to Earth. And, and, uh, ain't my daddy's we'll JPL. All the way to the ground and past huh. with Odyssey. My father would be scandalized by the looks of that control room. There's hippies and mohawks and people of color and women and nobody's smoking. And they're all wearing shirts that do well on camera. It's even multi-generational. We are three minutes past the top of the hour. With us right now is Rob Manning. He is the chief engineer for the entire Mars Science not to Laboratory a peanut. mission. And everybody is still very, very conscious of this communications issue. Whether or not we will know for sure if Curiosity landed okay, and, and we'll, we'll know it. Yes, well, we do have a fantastic, excuse me, I'm just finishing the peanuts. <laughs> the, 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 we have a fantastic array. We, we've got we've got three three spacecraft: um, uh, Odyssey spacecraft flying overhead, Mars reconnaissance orbiters flying overhead. We even have uh, Mars Express, European Mars Express overhead, as well as these tones that we're sitting back directly. So we have, give, give a we, we have a video, and it. maybe you freaking can kind of traffic walk jam. Through sure, just give it a try. Okay. Okay. So. As MSL approaches the atmosphere, 
um, we'll, we'll first have a straight shot of, of Earth looking backwards from behind us. Earth is to the left of that, that view. Uh, the great thing is, as it's coming in, we have two orbiters. You'll see them come into view in just a second. Uh, first, MRO from, from the south working the way north. And this is about the time that MRO is recording information that MSL is, is uh, sending out to the world. At the same time, um, Odyssey, which is coming in from the top part of the view, is listening to what MSL is doing. Right now, MSL is, is, is send, sending information to Odyssey, and Odyssey is repeating that information straight back, straight back to Earth. And that's what we're seeing in this room tonight. And you see where Odyssey is, where it is on the horizon, and how far it is, and that's one of the reasons why we have very a very very narrow window. Yeah, we can... this, this is a pretty tricky task. Um, this has it, been very well choreographed. People like Brian Schratz have done a fantastic job of making sure that all this, the coordination is happening. But it's very it's it's easy for this not to work. Um, one of the problems is the antenna is moving around and gets blocked by by uh, by equipment as it falls uh, comes the vehicle comes apart. It's, it is it, it is something that you can't rely on getting the guarantee sort of way. So if the signal stops, we stop being signaled, doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything wrong. So we will know fairly soon in the next several minutes whether or not Odyssey's move right. did indeed work and that yes. it will be in position for yes. us to be able to hear. That's right. It. Odyssey had to, to get into position and had to stow its antenna, uh, the one that goes back to Earth, turn the vehicle so it's pointing at our vehicle and then restow the antenna and, and start transmitting so, that, so it, when it hears from the rover it, it can repeat back to Earth. But that process means that it had to stop talking to the Deep Space Network for a while while it was doing that. And uh -huh. That's happening right about now. So the point uh -huh. is that people shouldn't get too excited if you don't hear from the rover. That's, and that's then right. Can... We've had problems with communications all along. In fact, uh -huh. one of the reasons we put so much effort into this is so that, so that if we do have a real problem, we can use this information to deduce, to deduce what may have gone wrong. And so, uh -huh. so that's why this information is so essential. But if we don't get it and we land safely, that's still okay too, even though it's just nerve wracking. Okay, so Rob, we're going to keep you here while All we right. go through entry, descent, and landing. He'll be there to give us his wise oh, knowledge you. and all this. <laughs> but meantime, let's go back into the MSA and get ready for entry, descent, and landing. Uh, things are looking pretty good right now. I'm getting a report right now from uh, Odyssey that uh, they're in position. Uh, they're they're going to be there for us for EDL. So they have reacquired to the Earth, uh, and we're good to go. So uh, we will have coverage throughout EDL uh, through uh, a little bit from about a minute and a half after entry through touchdown and then some. So uh, hopefully we'll see you all the way to the bottom and see a successful landing. Uh, the EDL activity lead is about to uh, narrate uh, what's going on in the spacecraft. We're entering the EDL prep uh, anchor. That's an EDL body. Flies off the boat, so let's listen. See that the map filter is dropping to the correct state. IVP has stopped, and the EDL prep anchor is complete. Okay, copy that. We're about three minutes from the nature of that thing, correct? Get crawler off my screen! The uh, activity lead is almost that we're, we turned off the attitude control system, uh, the cruise attitude control system. We don't need it anymore. Uh, we're standing by for a heat rejection system. Uh, that's the, uh, the coolant that's been keeping us. I get that off my screen! Uh, we'll vent that ahead of cutting the first stage. We're like coming up on two yeah. stage separation. Go ahead, please. Uh, oh shit, my top looks melting. You guys won't shoot me any results from SIMS to me via email. I guess is the way we're going to go now because the screens are, are going to transition into mm -hmm. having your beautiful faces on it instead of uh, your aspects. Right, ideal, ideal. Ooh, boys with earrings. Dad would just be scandalized. Uh, phase, we should have our... Oh, look at the guy with the stars in his hair. Second from the left, Mohawk. Roger, I'm still, um, I'm still open. Red, white, and blue. Red and blue, Mohawk, white stars. Uh, copy, I understand, and 
uh, we are on it. You will get it uh, in the usual uh, communication window. Play EDL. The expected Project. warnings for the Electra Hill Motor. Damn, that thing's traveling Three. fast. Copy. The LT running some final, uh, final simulations to show where we're going to end up based on the latest navigation data. That thing is going to look good. Uh, puts us right in the middle of the ellipse. Play, we can confirm the BCB actions have been commanded. And through the EHA, we confirm that the discharge vets are now in manual discharge. Okay, copy. Power changes. In preparation for the first stage separation. It's going to cut loose the first stage and all that solar array that's been uh, powering us uh, through all of the cruise. Iron firing card are now powered on. Go ahead, EDL comp. As we're ready to switch the displays over to the 1010 marker, uh, which will show EDL data and tones. Ready. Uh, Stand by one. Uh, yes, we are ready. Copy that. Okay. And we can confirm from the EHA now that the BCBs are in manual charge mode. Copy BCBs in manual charge. We've also completed enabling the pyro command. We're in the process of powering off the first stage hardware. Mm -hmm. We can verify through telemetry that the first stage hardware is powering on. Flight power, power bus is on. Copy, thank you, Pyro. And enabled. But that's a seven power minute delay, right? Devices that are going to be used to cut the current stage, and uh, a lot of the separation events during the EDL have been harmed. Now it's confirming that we are starting venting. HRS vent is starting. And by EDL, we're firing our first pyros to vent the HRS system. The medley RTDP warning is already expected. The navigation team can see that the, that the fluid coming out of the that heat rejection system is actually pushing the vehicle a little bit, as expected, so we can confirm that the vent is actually happening. I've become a division manager on EDL Ops. I'm crying. <laughs> EDL Com, this is uh, dynamics on EDL Ops. Go ahead, Dynamics. Uh, is our display configured correctly for you in the MSA? Uh, Brimden, uh, I see it. Waiting for x man tones. Very nice picture. We're uh, expecting tone start at 513.17. Copy. We're under two minutes for first stage separation. Odyssey Com, Odyssey Machine Manager on EDL Ops. Uh, this is EDL Ops on EDL Ops. Uh, it's completed its to the EDL Com attitude. All systems are nominal. Odyssey is go for EDL Com support. Great to hear from you. Thank you very much. We have a cruise pitch up uh, about to happen. We're all of EDL, so we will have their coverage. Things are looking good for them, and they're looking good for us. We're about one minute to cruise stage separation. Okay. The uh, transition to your tone now. Uh, the system should be configured shortly. And we're seeing carrier only. We're changing to tones at this time. So uh, we're switching from telemetry and to telemetry and we're going to move to just tones. And we're seeing heartbeat. We are receiving heartbeat tones this time. Uh, Bernard, we're seeing the expected two seconds of heartbeat, followed by the 10 seconds of carrier pulse. Now, we're going to see something that could be consistent with the simulation. We're showing a good strong signal, uh, higher than expected uh, carrier power. And we continue to see heartbeats. Uh, EDL comp tones look good. 
We are receiving our eight tones at this time. Uh, things are looking good. See that we are priming the the uh, entry RCS thrusters. Cruise stage separation. Oh. Oh. And about one minute, Curiosity ZDL software will wake up and begin uh, final preparation for entry. Uh, the first action I'll take is to fire some warm up pulses to get the uh, entry RCS thrusters going. The pulses once for the spacecraft will get the thrust that we want uh, and start when it's counting on it. We did see the heartbeat signal drop low for a second as the signal passed by the donut of the cruise stage. Simulations have gotten better since I was a kid, too. Oh, that's not, that's not my daddy's JPL. My chocolate is melting. Less than two grand. I mean, less yeah, than three ahead. grand. Can you check with the eyes where the push will be so you can see one way they've done? Hey, did you copy? Curiosity is reporting that it is spinning down and turning to entry. Uh, flight is just, we've been one way for a while. Roger that. But currently we're just seeing the tone up. Roger. Vehicles reporting that it has completed its turn to entry and spin down uh, and it has separated the cruise balance mass devices. So far. It's got to do a lot of stuff before it finally touches down. At this time, the vehicles are just sending heartbeat tones just as we expect. Uh, it should be quiet for the next several minutes, hopefully. Except for me. We are about seven minutes to entry. Oh, God! At this time, uh, Mars is actually pulling Curiosity in. And we're speeding up. Uh, we should be traveling around 5.4 kilometers per second on our way to about 5.9. Well, we're under 2K now. What are your thoughts at this point? Well, I'm very excited. The pattern, the pattern. This, this, is, the, uh, this is the part that uh, really is entry. This is where we're going to be the top of the atmosphere. The great thing is that the propulsion system is to be working, returning the vehicle. Uh, it looks like the vehicle is uh, going to be uh, doing its entry job very well. I'm very excited about that. Everything is going very well. So make sure everyone keeps their eyes on the television because we might actually get some pictures as well, and we might be monkey yeah. and cover with dust um, when we first land. But uh, we'll get, might get some pictures today. Uh, wow, at landing, just after, just a few minutes after landing. Excellent. Okay, we're standing by. Thank you. I'm smoking for all y'all guys that can't smoke in there anymore. I'm old school. To entry. Uh, we're continuing to wait for entry interface. The uh, spacecraft is continuing to send heartbeat tones, telling us that uh, everything is okay and there's nothing significant to report. Um, this is as expected. It should be quiet for a little while, at least. Nothing significant except we're get going to land on Mars! <laughs> We're 
We're now five minutes to entry. Oh, God. Continue to receive RP tones. Everything is good. So we'll know something in 12 minutes. At that time, minutes. curiosity should be up to about 5.5 kilometers per second. <coughs> so, what's taking place now? so right now, the vehicle is flying through space. It's actually uh, in deep space field. In fact, not until after we hit the entry point, we actually begin to feel the force of the atmosphere gradually building on that heat shield. So it really is still a spacecraft. It hasn't actually become an aircraft. But we've checked out its, its, its rockets. It's actually used to turn the vehicle. It's turned to the right attitude. And that means it's ready to go. It's, as soon as we start feeling the, at, the uh, atmosphere, it'll start doing its role to get to the, to the turn. It's part, it's part of the, the guidance that it does. It starts off with a right bank, and eventually will make a left bank, mm-hmm. and, then, uh, and then make another right bank as it makes its way to, uh, uh, to, to the landing site. So it's a capsule right now. It's a capsule. In. It's a, just a bare capsule. Um, nothing looking out, just the radio system sticking out. And, uh, uh, and that's where we're getting, we're getting tones from that vehicle right this second. Okay. And we don't get, we're not getting Odyssey data yet. It doesn't happen until a little while later. After parachute. Actually, after, maybe, maybe during, just after entry, about the time before parachute, just before parachute opens up. Okay. Medial phase dynamics. Go ahead, dynamics. Uh, just FYI, uh, OD227. Uh, Runout looks like uh, missed distance of 232 meters. Over. 232 meters? That's correct. Less than the divert. Mm. Roger. We can expect a brief signal dropout when we switch to the TLJ. The trajectory is too steep, it'll burn up. It's too shallow, it'll bounce off the atmosphere. We've got that data for a while, we've got to store it and then send it back down here for us to decode. We're still seeing heartbeat tones, everything looks good. The aircraft should be up to 5.6 kilometers per second. Look at him shake. They're getting squirmy. They're getting real squirmy. <laughs> they want this done, damn it. It's like waiting for Santa Claus. Only worse. Show us that the uh, best guess of our landing target location is about 232 meters from the uh, landing target. Um, so, looking good so far. Continuing to receive our 775 tones. miles. We're about 90 seconds from entry. Flight to the MXC. 750. Go ahead, Faith. That last solution was with 227 or OD228. Uh, that is OD227. Thank you. You guys have now OD228 in your possession. Uh, there will be no 228 for us, Faith. That's just fine because the difference is One minute entry. within spinning distance. No spinning. Uh, affirmative. And then shortly, we'll have a short drop out. The guy's uh, standing up with such tone, sweaty balls. Uh, switching to a tilted antenna that will be used through entry. Okay. Alec Baldwin. He looks like Alec Baldwin. Sweaty balls. Where is he? Some ball. Hundreds of Baldwins are like bunnies. Switching the GLJ, signal dropped, and it's... We just saw the signal drop, and in case we change the status. 450 miles. 
We're seeing heartbeat tones again after the switch. Things are looking good. Uh, that tone's back again. Coming up on entry. Vehicle reports entry interface. At this time, it'll begin pressurizing the propulsion system to increase the thrust of the system. Uh, we'll use that for all the maneuvering in the atmosphere we're about to do. 350 miles. What happened? We're standing by for guided start, start of guided entry. But it's guiding itself, right? You guys aren't guiding it. Now we can see the engine atmosphere in the upper. We are beginning to feel the atmosphere as we go in here. The vehicle just reported via tone that it has started guided entry. At this time, the vehicle is needing to turn its way to the target. That is starting its first tank reversal. Oh my gosh. First bank reversal complete. We have seen peak deceleration. Oh. We have passed through peak heating and peak deceleration. Uh, it is reporting that we are seeing G's on the order of uh, 11 to 12 Earth G's. Flight GDSA. GDSA flight go. We are processing data from Odyssey. <laughs> Fucking A. We are now getting telemetry from Odyssey. Right on. All right, reversal two complete. Copy bank reversal two complete. We might pull this off. Okay. Standby flight. We have a connection, but we actually do not have any data yet. Well, give it a second. Copy. We can expect some intermittent contact at this time. <laughs> as the uh, signal gets there increases to the perspective where you are now seeing time. We have lots of GPS. And the station is updated, the adventure heading alignment. Very good! Uh, it's going to be good. It's time to drop the vehicle while we're trying to control how far it's flying down range and it's just heading directly to the target. Wow. End of range control, air use minus 1.24. Okay. 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 The ALT team is reporting that uh, we are uh, that things look pretty good at the end of range control. We have control. We have merged uh, a lot of the error, and we should be heading for the target. Oh. Play EDL. <laughs> TDS warning is okay. Copy. Power on. We are seeing a tone from the white uh, uh, indicating that we uh, have seen uh, have seen heating from heat shield uh, through the MEBDI instrument uh, every single time. So that's okay. During the setting alignment phase, we're flying almost horizontally like a plane. We're going about Mach 2.4 at an altitude of 17 kilometers or so. Vehicle supporting heartbeat tones again, uh, indicating that everything is fine during heading alignment. Uh, mm -hmm. We are standing by for straight up and parachute. Continue to decelerate down to about Mach 2. As a reminder, we should have parachute deploy around Mach 1.7. We're at 15 kilometers out. We've begun entry balance mass jettison. and predicted minimum for downrange is 1.597 kilometers. EDL ops, Odyssey systems on EDL ops. Thrusters oh. <laughs> have been re-enabled. Uh, we will control our attitude on shoot. We are decelerating. Wrist mode under our tank bomb is accelerating. We are at 150 meters per second. 
Dynamics phase. Come back again with uh, wrist mode dynamics. Wrist mode is nominal. We are not marauders and descending. Now in range. That filter converged with a velocity correction of 0.7 meters a second. We have acquired the ground with the radar. Now for the heat cloud. Vigil has separated and we found the ground expanded. Due to radar location as expected. We're standing by to prime the Emily engines in preparation for power quite. Never saw high fives either. We're down to 90 meters per second at an altitude of 6.5 kilometers in setting. By EDL, we've got some torpedo warnings. What? But it is in battle in short mode, so I should power the director of communications at this time. We may have lost our What? What? We're down to 86 meters per second at an altitude of 4 kilometers in setting. Of course, this was all seven minutes ago. We have lost act. We have lost tones from Earth at this time. This is expected. Oh. We're continuing on Odyssey telemetry. Ground solution equals minus ten point eight years. Vertical velocity of minus eighty. We are priming eight years of life. Start enabled. Standing by for batch all separation. Signal Odyssey is still strong. We are in powered flight. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It worked. We're at altitude of one kilometer descending. Now the legs have to lock. And that bungee cord has to work. Down to 50 meters per second. 500 meters in altitude. Jesus. Standing by for sky cream. Constant velocity accordion nominal. Altitude error 5.9 meters. We found a nice flat place. We're coming in ready for sky crane. Down to 10 meters per second. 40 meters altitude. Sky crane has started. Sending at about 0.75 meters per second as expected. Expecting bridal cut shortly. Eagle does. You remain strong. Good. Eagle down to nominal. Hey, Mom. We're landing on Mars, Osa. Yep. Uh, you go to Mom. Radio stable. Radio stable. Radio jump is good. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a good chance. All happened seven minutes ago. So it'll be seven minutes at least until the first picture. Bumps. Odyssey data is very strong. Oh. Odyssey is nice and high in the sky. At this time, we're standing by for images. Now, the first images are going to be very low resolution because there's a rear complete. camera. We've got thumbnails. 
Uh -huh. I was just gonna say they're thumbnails. <laughs> the rear camera is primarily for navigation, so they know where they, uh, if they need to back up. The head camera will come on shortly. It's dusty. It's a picture. It's the wheel. It's the wheel. It's the wheel. It is a wheel. You can see the tread. Good news for change. How nice. See what we can do. Imagine keep what watching, we, guys. Keep watching the screen. Imagine There's what we could stuff. do if we Internet bring this perpetual war. No, two fifty six. Okay, we're gonna get it. Okay. So here we are. We're gonna start. Okay. <laughs> so we have landed. We landed out at the time we thought we would, and we now have our first image. We have our first image. Um, this we've got us a sixty four by sixty four thumbnail. Front, a rear has cam image. And you can see the shadow there. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly which our orientation is of the vehicle, but uh, we're looking through it. A few, I think in a, just a few minutes, we might get even a, a, two, a, a larger 250 to 256 uh, frame uh, uh, pixel image um, of that same same end. So we're looking at the shadow. See, the horizon is actually in the distance. You can't really tell that. So we're looking actually at the shadow of the late afternoon sun. Uh, and uh, well, uh, so these are the rear has cams. The rear has cams, and, and it so does have a dust cover on it. It does point. have a dust cover, but it's the dust that covers the problem. It's the fact there's dust in the air because we've just blown dust all over the place with <laughs> our descent engines. Fantastic. Not bad for a bunch of monkeys. So there could be more. There could be more. <laughs> if we get, if we wait. Oh yeah! Ah, this is the highest. This is the 256. My 256 image. This is the highest. You see dust particles on the window. You can see the horizon there in the background, and there is there is the wheel of the rover safely on the surface oh. of Mars. I can't. Freaking this is unbelievable. A. Yeah. Yeah. We might get another one of these, and if we're lucky, and before Odyssey goes away, we'll get two more of these same injuries going the other side of the vehicle, and also probably dusty. This is amazing. Sure beats drones and Gitmo and. So that is one of Curiosity's rover wheels, wheels exactly. on the surface of Mars. Yes. Oh wow! We did, now we have another. It's another image coming down. This is a view looking the other direction. There's still it's still being processed. You'll see it in just a second here. It's another. This is a another thumbnail image. Is that a shadow? That's the shadow of the of rover. Curiosity of the rover. rover on the surface of Mars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Dad. The Odyssey transition is about to end. Uh, it's about to set below the peak of hey, Mount Star. Dr. Very uh, so this is about all the data we're going to get, but things look great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy Curiosity Day, everybody.
that's another thing you never saw in the old days. The after party. <laughs> <laughs> Science, man. Sure has superstition by the tail. That's freaking awesome. That's a goddamn expensive sports car in that dirt. Yeah. I heard that. Take your headset off before you cut, boy. Uh, if anybody in the MSA is listening, you should check out our target location uh, on this current fly through. Anyone in the MSA is online, <laughs> you should watch. Hello? Anybody paying attention to me? MSA crew. There's somebody's mom. Got her hair done, too. That guy's face is bright pink. That's the whitest white man in the room. Lucky peanuts. <laughs> yes, my dear, you are on Mars. not destroy ourselves, we will one day travel to the stars.
a gardener sweater. I saw an engineer shirt. Look at that plaid shirt in the background with the shirt sleeve. Mission control is out of control. I swear he looks like a gay bald one. Hey, look at that old woman. Yay, old woman. Oh, we are very 